the COVID-19 pandemic is having a disproportionate effect on the health of men. The Public Health Agency of Canada's daily epidemiology updates says the gender breakdown in COVID-19 related admission to the ICU is 65% men, 35% women. This is consistent with international findings. World Health Organization data, for example, shows that in every age group, men are three times more likely to be admitted to the ICU. Although men and women contract COVID-19 at similar rates, most countries are reporting that men are much more likely to die from the disease. Now, over the weekend, reports emerged that Canada is one of the only countries where the reverse is at present the case, where women currently are dying more than men. This is being attributed to the high number of Canadian COVID cases showing up in long-term care homes, where the population is skewed towards females who outlive males. All of this points to two necessary actions. We must improve the conditions in which our elderly are living, and we must conduct more research to understand why, when controlled for age, and when looked at globally, men are experiencing more severe effects and dying at higher rates from COVID. It is remarkable when you think about it, that though the coronavirus affects the elderly much more than other age groups, and even though there are far fewer elderly men than women, yet it is still men who are dying in higher numbers in nearly all countries. The causes of this gender discrepancy are not entirely clear. Part of the problem is almost certainly that men tend to take poorer care of their health, and they engage in unhealthy behaviors like smoking and drinking alcohol, substance abuse, at higher rates than women. But it's not only physical health that must concern us. The severe isolation imposed by social distancing is also having serious mental health consequences for men. Even in the best of times, men often have smaller social networks than women, and the current situation is making it worse. Also, many separated and divorced fathers are losing all or partial access to their children during the lockdown, sometimes for legitimate reasons and sometimes not, but always painfully. Yet as governments have ramped up emergency funding for some vulnerable groups, we are not aware of any emergency funding, public policy focus, or even acknowledgement that boys, men, and fathers constitute a vulnerable group. So the Canadian Association for Equality is drawing attention to men's isolation and psychological health by launching a new ad campaign, which hit bus shelters in the nation's capital this month. The ads come in two varieties. The first addresses a longstanding problem and is headlined, Men, 75% of Suicides in Canada. The second speaks to the current crisis and is headlined, Male Isolation Just Got Worse. This unique campaign targets family and friends and urges us to intervene in support of male loved ones at risk. The visual, common to both of the two ads, features a distressed young man hiding his face behind a happy mask. The text reads, appearances can be deceiving. Men often suffer in silence. Help the men you love get the help they need. The campaign, launched in Toronto in the fall and revised following the outbreak of coronavirus, is a call to action to each of us to look behind the mask at the hidden signs that the men we love are suffering. The website is lookbehindthemask.com, where you will find links for support, learn how to identify some of the signs of despair in men, review the statistics on gender and suicide, and study the unique factors of male suicide, factors like relationship breakdown and unemployment. You will also learn how to intervene effectively if you believe that a male loved one is in crisis. We want to express our appreciation to those agencies that advised us on the creation of this campaign. The Distress Centers of Greater Toronto, the Canadian Mental Health Association of Toronto, and the Center for Suicide Prevention made themselves available for consultation and thus helped to strengthen our message. We are grateful also to campaign advisors, Professor Dan Bilsker and Professor Rob Whitley. Dr. Bilsker is registered psychologist and clinical assistant professor at the University of British Columbia. Dr. Whitley is assistant professor of psychiatry at McGill University. Both are available for interviews. You can join the conversation by following us on Twitter at Men and Families or on Facebook 
facebook.com slash men and families, or by tweeting your support using hashtag Let's Talk Men. Finally, we ask you to support our work, especially at this time. Our men's health programs are a critical lifeline for many men and families. We need resources to fully transition these services online. This will bring the additional benefit of social engagement to mediate the isolating effects of COVID. Please support our work at menandfamilies.org forward slash donate. If two thirds of the ICU cases of COVID-19 were women, there would rightly be urgent calls for better care, outreach for women at risk, and long-term funding for research into the causes of this imbalance. Because it's men, there should be exactly the same response. Because equality means equality for everyone. Thank you.